Hello, I'm Jacob from Intrepid Protoworks, and today we're going to go over the Dependent Measures t-test. To start off, we're going to go ahead and make a function get our mean, our variance, and our standard deviation. This is the same as many of our previous videos. For more details on those, please reference those videos. This video is going to be a bit shorter than normal. Uh, the Dependent Measures t-test is really just a variant of the several other t-tests we've covered in this series already. So yeah, sit tight and we'll go. Uh, go over it all. So we're just adding a couple more functions, getting our sample standard error, and now we get into the meat of it. So we need to get different scores rather than just looking at two different samples. So in this situation, we'll be looking at a before and an after. Then we will go ahead and make a list of the difference between the before and after scores. And then we'll go ahead and return that list. This will let us get the mean and standard deviation of the different scores. Next is to simply calculate the t-score based off of uh, what we've already put in. So we'll get our sample size, then we will get a little bit more space and add in our difference scores. So this will be the before and after, and then we'll get our mean for our different scores using our get mean functions and inputting our different scores and we'll get our standard deviation for our different scores by using the get sample st. This also takes mu, mu will be zero for this t test and then our t score is simply our mean difference minus mu divided by our standard deviation of the difference uh, divided by our sample size taken to the power point 0.05 which is the same as taking the square root. So now we've got to get our critical t. This is exactly the same as what we've seen previously. So we'll just copy and paste that in there. And then same with getting our p-value from our t. Exactly the same as in our last several videos. Our significance test is the same as well. And then we're going to go ahead and do our confidence intervals. And again, this is the same. So this brings us to our example already. So we're going to go ahead and just start with income data and we'll go ahead and go through opening up our data file, the same as we've done in previous videos as well. We'll filter out the header, filter out anybody that made negative or ambiguous incomes, filter out not applicables and filter out minors, and then we'll just append it. So now we're going to go ahead and create a subsample because it doesn't make much sense for our example to look at a, a multi-million data point sample. So we'll just take 24 data points. What's interesting about dependent measures test is that it's powerful. So you don't need a very big sample size to show there's an effect. And then we'll go ahead and simulate a treatment. So for this, we'll just loop through our sample and we'll say that for our awesome advice, it had an impact of anywhere from negative 200 to 500 on a person's income. And then we'll just uh, append that. Next, we'll go ahead and make a list of before and after scores. We'll call this aggregated income data. And we'll go ahead and do uh, each row in our income data sample and our new row will be our row and our income after treatment and we'll just use uh, an iterator to make sure we pair e up each of those and then we'll append each new row and that sets us up to get our um, t-test we'll go ahead and grab our means for our before and after scores and set our alpha define our test type we'll just do a uh, one-tailed positive because obviously our awesome advice is going to have a positive impact. Go ahead and do sig bool t, critical t, or p, and is equal to our significance test with our aggregated income data, our alpha, and our test type. Remember our before and after scores are in our aggregated income data. And then we'll just go through our results, reporting our results. This is the same as our previous videos with a couple minor differences. So the dependent measures t-test for paired samples was significant at our alpha where p equals our p rounded five decimal places and t equals our t value rounded two decimal places. We'll report our critical t and we will uh, report our means. Make sure, yep, there you go. Fix that real quick. Uh, yeah, now we report our mean for before and our mean for uh, after. Once we have that, we can just uh, copy and paste that and then say if it's not significant. And then we will do our confidence intervals. Other than changing the labels to make sense, this is exactly the same as before. So we, I've gone through and changed the labels already. And that should leave us basically ready to save and run our... Uh, and take a look at our results. 
set to run a new dedicated console, hit run, and this will pop us up a graph. So notice that our T score is five. It's almost out of range of our T table that we made a number of videos back. But let's run this again. Our T score is getting around five. You see that there's not a very big difference, but we notice that's significant. That's because we're assuming that the people are the same people, which means all the random noise that you get from all the other things gets balanced out because you're looking at the same people. This lets us look at a this gives us a much more powerful look because we can say that more than likely the only change is our intervention in this case super awesome financial advice and when looking at our after scores we can be like you know we can say it with a reasonable amount of confidence that the only difference here is you know a little bit of time and a change in income that's why you see when you have access to a limited number of participants you only have you have you will have small samples because it's a lot easier to get a powerful and uh, meaningful result from it so that should just about cover everything for our t-tests uh, there's more that we could cover but i think this is a good start we may come back to this in the future but for now i think we are just about ready to launch into the anova so in our next video we'll start talking about the f distribution Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, if you have any questions, do not forget to leave them in the comments below.